Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks have just announced their opening night roster for their game against Edmonton this Wednesday. Let's talk about who's on it and who's not on it. I'm Canuck Clay and this is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary, my second video of the day for Monday, October the 10th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. I just finished uploading my other video from today where I actually talked about my predictions for the opening night roster and then boom, doing some other stuff. And the Canucks tweeted out that Patrick Alvin and has announced the Canucks opening night roster. And if you watch my other video, if you somehow watched it in the past half an hour already, you, you heard me talk about 23 players and some combination of 14 forwards and seven defensemen or 13 forwards and eight defensemen plus the two goalies to make the 23. Well, I was wrong on both accounts. The Canucks actually set a roster of only 22 players which you're allowed to do you can go anywhere from 20 to 23 and it's 13 forwards seven defensemen and two goalies so one yeah they're uh 22 instead of 23 but they have one extra forward and one extra defenseman for some flexibility obviously so let's talk about the 22 players that are on it then the few players that aren't forwards neil zaman brock besser connor garland Niels hoglander bo horvat dakota joshua Danila Klimovic, Andre Kuzmenko, Curtis Lazar, JT Miller, Tanner Pearson, Elias Pedersen, and Vasily Podkolzin. So of those 13, the surprise is there's no Linus Carlson because the Canucks also announced at the same time that they have loaned Linus Carlson to Abbotsford and they have recalled or brought up Danila Klimovic. Now, I didn't get a chance to check the salary difference. I, maybe there's a $100,000, $200,000 difference in salary between those two players. And that maybe help the Canucks get under the salary cap because the whole point is your roster has to be cap compliant. So again, 13 forwards and the way they practice today, um, they didn't have Besser in a line rush, in the line rushes. They did have Carlson and then Mikheyev was the extra. But Mikheyev not listed as part of these 13 active, uh, 13 forwards on the active roster. I'll get to that in a second. If you want to know about all the line breakdowns and everything, check out my video from earlier today. On defense, seven defensemen, and that would be Kyle Burrows, Oliver ekman Larson, Quinn Hughes, Tucker Pullman, Jack Rathbone, Luke Shen, and Riley Stillman. So of those seven, uh, no surprise there, the sixth at practice day, plus Quinn Hughes, who was missing another practice with the flu. And then, of course, the two goaltenders. This is the one that we knew for sure, basically from the time Spencer Martin signed his new contract, Thatcher Demko and Spencer Martin. So again, 13 forwards, seven defensemen, two goalies, Makes a total of 22, one short of the league maximum. Three players that will start on the injured reserve list are one forward, Ilya Mikheyev. He practiced today, but non-contact, and they're hoping to get him in full contact practices by this weekend. So he's definitely not playing on Wednesday night. That's why he's, he's on the injured list. And then Travis Dermott and Tyler Myers. Dermott out with the concussion, Myers out with the lower body injury. If you watch my video from earlier today, I, uh, you know, kind of speculated whether or not Tyler Myers would start on the LTIR. Now, the difference between the injury reserve and the long-term injury reserve, so IR versus LTIR, I actually looked this up after I recorded my video. Maybe I should have done it before, earlier this morning, I mean, earlier this afternoon, but before I recorded this one. Injured reserve, a player goes on there and they have to miss a total of, a minimum of seven calendar days, seven calendar days. Long-term injury reserve is not a separate list. It's actually just a, simply a different classification of the injured reserve, a subgroup, if you call it. And for those players, they have to miss a minimum of 24 calendar days. So it's a big difference, seven versus 24, one week versus three and a half weeks, and a minimum of 10 NHL games. So obviously that, that's a big chunk. And that, that's about right, because they play, they play a game every two days or so. So again, injured reserve, minimum of seven calendar days, long-term injury reserve, minimum of 24 calendar days, and 10 NHL games. The salary cap implications, if you're a player on long-term injury reserve, then you basically, it's a little more complicated than this, but you, the, you can basically think of it as you, you can go over the cap by that much, as long as you're near the cap. So for instance, Michael Ferlin, he's on long-term injury reserve, $3.5 million cap, if, uh, cap it, if the Canucks get as close as they can to the $82.5 million cap, they can actually exceed it by 3.5 million. So in theory, 
they, if in, in a perfect world, if they spend right to the cap, they can actually go up to 86 million, including Michael Furlan's 3.5. But it, uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Whereas the players on injured reserve, their players count towards your salary cap. But obviously the advantage is, is you can bring them back after only seven days uh, instead of 24 days. And you can name that retroactively. So the Canucks technically could, if it's in the middle of the season, they could miss one or two games. And then you could set your IR date retroactively back a few days in time. So you don't have to start from seven days from the time that you filed it. You can actually say, oh, actually, this was retroactive back to last Tuesday or last Wednesday. And then you only have a couple days to expire before that player can get back into your lineup. So the three players, once again, that start on the injured reserve list are Ilya Mikheyev, Travis Dermott, and Tyler Myers. So there's the 22 that I named on the roster, the three on injured reserve. The only one I need to find clarity on is Phil DiGiuseppe. As far as I know, he's still part of the Vancouver Canucks. He hasn't been assigned to the Abbotsford Canucks, um, but this tells me that he might be on long-term injury reserve. So the Canucks could conceivably start with 22 players on their active roster, the ones we just named. Then they have three players on injured reserve, Mikheyev, Dermott, and Myers. And then two players on the long-term injury reserve. And that would be Michael Furlan, who's been there basically since he's been here. And then Phil DiGiuseppe. And that one's yet to be confirmed. So that, Canucks fans, is the roster. So opening night, uh, let's presume that Quinn Hughes will be healthy. You're going to have Thatcher, Demko, and Nett. My guess is you go Hughes, Shen, Oyo with Pullman, and then I would go Rathbone Burroughs with Riley Stillman as your extra defenseman on Wednesday night. And then up front, assuming Besser can play, uh, you know, I would go Miller, Pearson, Besser as my top line. I'd go Petey with Kuzmenko and Hoglander. And then I'd go Horvat with Pearson, sorry, Horvat with Podkolzin, and then either, um, and then Connor Garland, yes. I go Horvat, Garland, and and uh, Podkolzin. So let's try that again real quick. Uh, uh, Miller, Pearson, Besser, Podkolzin, Pedersen, and, sorry, Podkolzin, Kuzmenko, and probably it would be Hoglander, and then the third line would be Horvat with, Garland and Podkolzin. I, I do like Pedersen between uh, the two Russians, Kuzmenko and Podkolzin. It sounds like they're going to be split up. It'll be PD with Kuzmenko, then Horvat with Podkolzin. So that's how I think you line up. Then your fourth line with Neil Zaman, Dakota Joshua, and Curtis Lazar. So Canucks fans, let me know your thoughts on this opening night roster. Any surprises for you? Still going to figure out the, the rationale behind the Klimovich, or sorry, the Klimovich and the Carlson swap. And then, of course, Dermot Mikheyev and Meyer starting the, the season on injured reserve. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Any surprises for you, to you, with the setting of this opening night roster. Thanks again to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, who perform and transform personal training weight loss. Thank you to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame and franchise members, and thanks to all of you. Subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to, leave a tip, a super thanks if you'd like to, become a member if you'd like to, and definitely uh, leave a comment down below if you'd like to, your reaction on this opening night roster. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. See you tonight at 10 p.m. for Connects After Dark and 11 p.m. for Clay's Connects Commentary Live. God bless and go Connects, go.